Hey you guys, it is me, Laura, and we have wrapped up our um, American History Unit on Native Americans. And as we're going through early Native Ameri or early American history, I would have to say that I would do this whole three separate units that we are starting with all in one. And it's Leif the Lucky. We just finished Native Americans, and now we are doing Christopher Columbus. And I think if I had to do it all again, I would lump them all together and call it Discovering America, and I would just kind of work on them all together. The reason being, um, there's just not a lot about Native Americans and their culture in um, North America especially. There's not a whole lot there because there wasn't really a lot of written language. At least my understanding is there wasn't really a lot of written language before Europeans came. So it's very difficult to do an entire unit, and we've kind of moved to this um, format of really studying really good biographies about people who were actually there and then branching off from that. And I'll be showing that a little bit more in um, the next video about Christopher Columbus unit, which we're doing right now, because that format has been working really, really well for us. I've learned pretty quickly that my boys really are not into crafting hands-on projects all that much. Timothy's definitely more into it than Samuel, but he's so little, um, it's hard to do a lot of the things. So I find that making those activities and materials available to them, and maybe even sitting down and working on some myself, and then letting them come and do it with me, oftentimes they want to, sometimes they don't, but that that tends to work a whole lot better um, than, hey, let's do this thing. Um, it often ends up in frustration because I end up doing it and the kids end up not being interested and it just ends up not really being a very educational experience in the long run. So I'm eager to show you with Christopher Columbus what some things are that we have changed. But as far as early Native Americans, there is a video that we watched that was really actually good about Native Americans before Columbus and before European colonization. And it's really a lot about agriculture um, in relation to it, but it's, it's really kind of a good, um, good intro. And I will put below, there's like one violent scene because it shows war in... Um, Europe and I'll tell you where that is so if you want to skip that with your kids I skipped it with Samuel then you can do that but if that doesn't bother you then that's fine too but it was a really really good documentary um, and so I will link that and so we did that and then we had a set of books that we read through oh, there was a really excellent activity book that I found and I we only did one activity from it which was basket weaving what I did is I had gone through ahead of time and picked out some activities and I think they that that was just hard for them but then when I set the book out for them to look at Samuel was much more interested but by that time we had already moved on to Christopher Columbus and he was kind of over it so I'll go ahead and show you the books and resources that we used for our Native American unit study and I look forward to our wrapping up this unit study so that I can share with you what we've done on Christopher Columbus and how we are going to be moving forward it's kind of been revolutionary to our homeschool in general and so I'm excited to share it with you but here's what we use getting ready to take a bunch of Native American books back to the library and this series is one that basically this has really been an awesome awesome set for us um, when you're studying Native Americans you know the different tribes and the different everything it kind of spreads out over the history of American history um, but you know, they were here before, and so it's kind of hard to just kind of, we don't know much about the way that their life was before we came. So um, it was kind of hard to study that kind of before aspect, but these were really good in general, like as a basic, as, as just as an introduction to Native Americans. I believe there's more in this series than what I have here. This is what we were able to get at our local library. But it, it explains a lot about the fact that, like, not all indigenous peoples, not all Native Americans were the same. They were all different and had their own cultures, and um, it's just really great. So these books go through and answer a lot of the same questions. How did they eat? Um, what did they live in? How were they educated? Um, what was it like as a child? What was it like as an adult? Like, 
just everyday life. And so um, there's an introduction to each tribe. Tells a little bit about when they were there and kind of where they lived. And then it goes through and it asks the questions, what did they look like? Um, and then, you know, they didn't have red skin that no Indians did. It talks about the colors of their skin and how they wore their hair. Um, and it just goes through and talks about the different houses for the different tribes and um, how they lived. Did they like the, the Hopis? I know it talked about, I know that they're peaceful and they stayed in one place and here the tribal, you know, some of the, the, um, Iroquois moved around and they had um, teepees and it talks about the different kinds of materials that they used and really really basic and there's good pictures here too. The thing that's great is that you can read one small section at a time if you have a child with shorter attention span and then you can maybe play and do some activities with that one section or if you have a child who just likes to sit down and read a lot you can just sit down and read through these books. Um, my kids both really liked them. One preferred the smaller sections with activities at the end, and the other just wanted me to read and read and read. Um, but that's kind of the way I did. So this is the Sioux one. I'll show you a little bit of the others. They're all very similar. The questions are a little bit different because um, the cultures are a little different. And so some of the questions that apply to one culture don't apply to the other. And so they just go through and have these pictures and talk about talk about life and one thing I like too is that it talks about it doesn't just stop at like what they did but like did the Americans like how it's not just like the past like it talks about now like where were their fights did the Hopi ever fight the Spanish for example um, did other Indian tribes attack the Hopi um, did the Americans treat the Hopi better? Why did the Hopi want to send their children to government schools? Like, it talks about even more modern stuff. Do the Hopi live differently today? And it talks about their lives today and what they do today. And, um, I just like that these are, they're very complete and I feel like they paint a, a pretty, pretty fair and accurate picture of, of the way Native Americans were treated, the way they live, and just really respect like the differences in the cultures. Um, and I really like that a lot. This is the, um, if you lived in the north uh, northwest coast, and this one, oh, I guess that first one I thought was Iroquois. That was Sioux. I'm sorry, I got confused. Iroquois didn't seem right. <laughs> That's what I thought I had read. And so it talks about the Iroquois. Um, some of these are more modern reprinting, like this one has tons of beautiful pictures and lots of color, lots more than the others. But still the same setup, the same same kind of situation there and then we have the Cherokee and the language and anyway these books were definitely excellent and if you have them at your library I highly recommend checking these out. This is More Than Moccasins and this is an amazing activity guide for um, North American Indian life and I think Dupes is going to help me show you this book today <laughs> but it is thick like you can see this is not just a tiny little book this has tons of stuff in it and I love it because it talks about how there were tons of different um, tribes and different cultures among Native Americans. And so each activity that it has in here explains what tribes used that and how they did and how, the differences between them. And it's really, really cool. So the way that the book is set up is, and there's lots of great information. So you have everyday life and various different things that the different um, tribes would use in everyday life, things that they wore. Um, and see, it's even got like, here's war bonnets, and so it would distinguish what the Blackfoot would wear, what the Apache would wear, and what the Plains Indians would wear. So it's got all of these different, different things there, and song and dance, and toys, games that they would play, it's got things that they ate, different meals and snacks, and um, different different stories and um, storytelling things, and just some little things about childhood along with a big bibliography. So the introduction is really, really informative, and then there's a note to grown-ups. And then the cool thing is, is that like it goes through, like here is how you can make a wigwam. And so it tells you information about 
what kinds of Native Americans would have used a wigwam, and then it's got um, the different ways that they could have been built, pueblos. So really, this is so good. So like, even if you're just studying one tribe, this can be helpful, and you can find stuff for that one tribe, or if you're studying a bunch of tribes, and then it's got um, a bibliography here in the end. The one thing that is hard is that if you are studying a specific tribe, you can't like look in an index in the back and like look up all the stuff for Cherokee, for example. You can't do that. But um, it's still just a super helpful resource. And this is something, especially if your kids are a little bit older, that you could just set out and just kind of facilitate like them being able to make some of these things. You might even look ahead and try and guess what kinds of things your child might be interested in and try to have those materials on hand. But this has been, this is just a really, really good book. Unfortunately, my kids are not crazy about making things. I think they're just a little bit young for that still. Um, but they, and when they do it, they don't like to follow directions. They just kind of do it on their own. But it's still a really, really, really good resource. And I'm sure that we will be checking this out from our library again and again and again that that was helpful for you and I would love to, to hear about and see about what you guys have done for Native American unit studies what have been some really good resources that you have found like I said this I think is going to be one that we kind of do again and again um, for example when we're learning about Jamestown and we're learning about Pocahontas we'll be learning about the Algonquian Native Americans and just some of the various things will be scattered throughout but it is kind of fun to just understand and recognize that they were here and um, potentially how they got here and what they might have been doing before all of this, but that they were the ones that really discovered America. Um, but Leif the Lucky and Christopher Columbus are started bringing Europeans over, which completely changed things on our continent. So anyway, I would love to hear about other resources that you've used. Um, if you have any questions for me, please let me know and have a lot of fun learning with your kids because it's I don't know. I think it's so much fun. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys later and have a great day. <laughs> Bye.